every everywhere you look it's like that's going to change that's going to change that's definitely out of here we are witnessing transformation like never before welcome to ask more of ai the podcast at the intersection of business and ai i'm clara shy ceo of salesforce ai i'm sitting down with global music entertainer will i am He's the front man of supergroup Black Eyed Peas and also a tech startup founder and CEO of FYI. Do you code? Uh, I don't anymore, but I studied computer science when I was in college and I was a coder back in the day. C++, Python, like what you do, like what's your... Back what's your... in the day, yeah, C++, um, C, Java, Python. Hey, Python? Do you code? No, <laughs> but, but if I did... I would. <laughs> I'll be pretty freaking like, oh, man, I, that's one thing I wish. If somebody said, hey, out of all the things that you've accomplished or the things that you as aspire to do, what's one thing that you can't do that you wish you could do? And for right now and for a while, it's been coding. I wish I could like code the way I write music on the computer. I wish I could just like move out the way I got it. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could do that. I'll be like that, you know, self-motivated, autonomous guy that would work in a team, go off on my own, and then come back with this. I just like that. I just, all the folks that I've seen that do that, I'm just mesmerized. I think you could do it. I mean, you've reinvented yourself so many times. You started off as a musician, producer, but now you're this philanthropist, this tech startup founder. I'm pretty sure you could learn how to code. <laughs> Yeah, but I <clears throat> I just wish I did it when I was 15. You know how freaking awesome sauce I would be right now? If I, if, I think you're pretty awesome sauce right now. You know, I would be awesome sauce, you know, with... I would Cherry be on top. <laughs> all the sauces. The barbecue, honey mustard, you know, spicy pecan. I would be all them sauces. <laughs> right now I'm, I'm barbecue sauce, but not, you know, I ain't honey mustard sauce. Okay, so when you were 15, you weren't coding. What were you doing when you were 15? I was writing raps, dancing, battling other rappers. How'd you get into that? Really? Yeah. <clears throat> I told you I lo I've loved your music ever since I was in high school. My cousin, David Isaiah, rest in peace. My brother, Carl. My brother, Carl, was like, hey, Willie, I'm going to start a group. I'm like, a group? He's like, yeah, it's going to be called um, Cloud Nine. You know, I'm a rap, you beatbox. And we were inspired by Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick. We were inspired by um, uh, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Run DMC. And I used to beatbox. And my brother used to rap. But his raps were always short. My brother had this one rap. He said, uh, what did he say? I saw your dad. He was a good old man. I saw him eating food out the garbage can. He said, hey, young man, what you going to do? He said, when I finish, I'm going to eat you. And that was my brother's rap. <laughs> like, that's it? And so <laughs> he was like, yeah, come on, Willie, let's do it. I'm like, Carl, that's just one rap. You don't have another one? And so from then, I just started freestyling, just making up raps, like freestyle, and then my first rap I ever wrote was uh, my raps on the radio. Radio moving loud. I may be young, but I move the crowd. I'm 13, but I know that I rock you. Didn't I tell you leave well alone, Naka? I'm chill. I'm fly. That's who I go by. C-H-I-L-N-F-L-Y. That's my name, so don't wear it out. I make it part of people just scream and shout. This is chill coming to you live. You could run, but there's no place to hide. I'm like Predator. I'll catch you in a minute. Don't kill the noise because we ain't yet finished. This is chill coming from the rapper zone. If you're mad, I crown you with the microphone. You may think of me, but if you don't believe me, you could even ask my whole posse as your intel once you all get retarded. But as you do that, we're going to get it started because while you're dancing, no gum food the candy because in the bar, they're serving brandy. That is incredible. So my mom was like, what you know about Brandy, you ain't got no business talking about no alcohol, no raps. And I noticed that in the lyrics was scream and shout. You and brought that in later. And let's get started. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so your genius all started when you were 13. No, or I don't have that many ideas. Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 13 was like the, the, the age of like, you know, 
self, you know, knowing exactly what I what I was capable of doing. How do you think that that 13 year old, 15 year old experience would have been different if you had had chat GPT? No, nah, I, I don't I don't use chat GPT for that. <clears throat> for me. I like to find the route myself. You know, like when you go on ChatGPT is like you're going on a hike. And trust me, I love AI. I love ChatGPT. I love what Sam and the team are doing. I love what Dario started. I love Anthropic. I love a lot of, I love all this stuff. But if this is a hike, I'm the guy with the machete going out and carving out the route that everyone else is going to take. Like when you go on a hike, go to Griffith Park, you go to Malibu, you go on these hikes, somebody went there first to carve out your hiking path. Your trailblazer. Oh, well, yeah, that's what trailblazer is, yeah. I like that. I like that when writing songs. And I like the journey. Even when you were 13? Even when I was 13. So you I, think there are 13-year-olds out there today that they have, you think they have space to be creative in this, this AI-filled era? There's no rules to feeling good about what you've created. However, whatever makes you feel like you've rinsed out whatever you sponged up, yeah, you, you got to rinse it out. Me, I like to rinse it out with my own hands. There's people that like to get the lemon and squeeze it themselves or the lime and squeeze it themselves. And then there's that little contraption you put the lemon in and do like that. Let's say ChatGPT is that. It helps you squeeze and get every single kernel out. That's great. But for me, I like to squeeze it myself. What does it mean for the industry, though? What industry? The music industry, the creative industry. I think, and I have a different view on this. <clears throat> the entertainment industry when it comes to sounds and songs is actually three industries. It's the publishing industry, which is the first with the invention of the printing press, the live industry or touring. Um, so theater, um, plays, orchestras, operas. That's hundreds and hundreds of years. We had that. And in those times, songs were different. The duration of the song was different. The purpose and the premise of a song is different. But it took the record industry to come to give us our modern form of a song. The archiving of sounds and songs. We could go to the Louvre right now and we could see paintings from 13, 14, 1500. What's a song from that era? What do I find that songs exist? The same archiving of plays, like Shakespeare, paintings, Da Vinci. What's that of songs before Mozart, before Bach? Because it took the printing press for us to archive the Bachs and the Mozarts. So now here we are in, the, in a new era a new crossroads, a new renaissance. Why are we going to put the music industry's format on an abundance, infinite options? See, the record industry is like, you know, it's fi it was finite, right? You only, a song could only be recorded on lacquer because it only had a certain amount of storage. So structure and songs and contracts had to be made. a and has had to come into the studio and be like, oh, this song's too long. Put it into the contract that a song is this length, an album, or this many songs, because that's what fits on our equipment. Technology constrained us. Mm -hmm. So wait, so now AI is coming and we're going to put the same constraint um, uh, architecture on AI? That, that doesn't sound smart. Or are you supposed to go and work um, in this space and reimagine a song? Reimagine the purpose of music. Now let's go to the freestyle and the improv and the artists that are really good at it. Dave Matthews, when he's up there singing, he's telling stories. At any given time, he could 
play the guitar, look to you in the eye and speak to you. You could ask him a question and he could sing the answer. You could uh, pause, play at a different uh, tempo, change his time signature, slow down, speed up at any given time, change subjects. It, music is dynamic, but the recording industry doesn't allow it to be dynamic. How can you have dynamics on a recording for crying out loud? The, the name of the industry is not dynamic. The recording, it's there, it's still doesn't move after that. And so AI is supposed to do that? No, get the hell out of here. So now that you know you have this flexible, this malleable potential, that means when I go in there and write, I have to think of a whole bunch of things I could add to this experience. You have to train a model to do that. So instead of going to the studio to record, I'm going to the studio to train a model. And instead of writing lyrics to record it to a mic, I'm writing lyrics and context and similes and metaphors to paint an even deeper picture to take the person, the experiencer, not the listener, the experiencer on a journey of dialogue, conversation, sound, rhyme, harmonics, syncopation. You got to dream something brand spanking new. Bringing more dimension. Yeah, yeah. Like right now, music industry is, which is great, the two dimensional paintings. We're, we're in, this is like five dimensions here with AI, not three. You could do so much. That's what I'm excited about. I'm, I want to dream some new stuff. You're also a founder of an AI company. Tell mm. us about that. I realized after COVID, that the creative community was working off of five products to get work done. They were on WhatsApp, Dropbox, WeTransfer, email, Zoom, <clears throat> just to work and collaborate. And while doing that, your comments are in like Dropbox. Some comments are on WeTransfer. Then to send it, to, if you're big files, you can't send big files on the messenger, so you have to send it to email. Then you hop off to get on a, you know, large group. So you go on a Zoom. And that's like a messy way to work. And so I was like, hey, I want to I want to create a sing singular interface um, for a creative enterprise. But uh, <clears throat> I want to use the same type of architecture that I saw with crypto and NFTs, where a key is issued to secure your asset. But then I looked at my like my Dropbox or my my files. No one no one gave me a key for my assets that actually are out there making money. Um, in the traditional sense, songs that are played on the radio, songs that are played on <clears throat> on streaming platforms, and people's lives in their cars and their worlds. But there's no key to protect it. It's like, well, what if I had a? What if there was a messenger that had the same type of elliptical curve cryptography as, you know, these uh, you know, encryption platforms and financial systems, but for your digital assets and your messages and your data? And what if I can call somebody from the asset itself? Because what what happens? You make a song, you have an image, you have a, a doc, you tell somebody, hey, look at that and call me back. Listen to this and call me back. Like, why can't I call you from the asset? Like, so when you ring, you see MP4. You ring and you see MP3. You it rings, you see, like, you know, the document. And you know what the person's calling for. All right there. Yeah, and then when they answer it, it's synced and you press play and you hear it the same quality. Like, how come that hasn't happened yet? And around the time, you know, I've always been in the AI community. Um, I had my jacket on during the AI winter and would invest in these these uh these small teams um and then we 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 implemented our uh, generative ai into the core of the platform so you're not talking to ai by yourself siloed you could have ai woven through you know your team conversations we had that in 2021 2021 yeah it was when, we, when i showed mark i'm like look mark 
Um, look, look how we have. We have AI integrated in group conversations, not like a bot. Like, you know, we all know what bots are on chat threads. It wasn't like bots. And we're, you know, I think the, saying bots in the age that we are in now is like, I don't, I don't think that's the right description of what these systems are today. That's FYI.ai, which is focus your ideas with artificial intelligence or free your imagination with artificial intelligence or, yeah, obviously for your inspiration. You're an advocate for STEM education and you do a lot of philanthropy in education. How do you think we should be educating our, our kids differently for the AI era? I'm attending Harvard. This is my second year. And last year I was using FYI to learn um, the different case studies. And it really was like re a refreshing new way to, to, uh, to collaborate and, and, and work and learn. Um, this year, I, I saw something that I know is going to change rapidly. Does a teacher know or tutor know if you understand, truly understand uh, the assignment? If, they tr if you truly understand, you know, what is being taught. School is school the way school used to be when my mom went to school, when my grandma went to school, when I went to school. It's not personalized. Well, personalized, it is. You can have a teacher that's, that understands your learning patterns, like Miss Montez was that for me. Like we, there's those teachers that, that are personalized. Can you scale that? Nope. Um, a textbook is a textbook. I can't like have a conversation with a textbook. You know, we're entering an, a, a, a time that humanity's never been to. And it's exciting. That means new types of schools are going to, like, like I went to a magnet school. There's KIPP schools, there's charter schools. And there's going to be pushback, like there always is when new technology comes. Like one point in time, it was like deemed inappropriate or not um, allowed to have a calculator in school. Right now, there's calculators in school. A new type of forever learning is around the corner, which is awesome. People are going to have Ivy League professors in their pocket. Rich folks, poor folk all wanting the ideation folk, the imaginative folk, the hyper-creative folk to banter with it to solve problems, to unearth tomorrow's industries. That, that, that's what's exciting about right now. It's fresh. Every, every, everywhere you look, it's like, that's going to change. That's going to change. That's definitely out of here. And there's some stuff, something's going to come up, move, move out the way. Something's going to come up from there. Something's going to sprout from there. We are witnessing transformation like never before. Well, thank you. I, I told you earlier, when I was in high school, I remember feeling very inspired. The Black Eyed Peas inspired me. You graduated in high school when? Uh, 2000. So 2000. A two th in 2000, we were on our second tour. And uh, the way we got our record deal was playing colleges. So we had this show in Santa Barbara. I remember like it was yesterday. Some girl was like, hey, you want to come to our dorm party? And I, she's like, oh my gosh, I love your new record. I'm like, new record? We just have one record out. No, 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 the new record. Oh, okay, maybe you're mistaken. Or you probably think, oh, maybe you saw our first group's album and you thinking this is our second record. But that first record never came out. Well, maybe you heard it on the underground. She's like, no, the new record, Bridge in a Gap. I love weekends. Wait, wait. How do you even know the name of our songs on our new album? How do you even know the album title? Oh my gosh, from Napster, silly. Wait, Napster? Wait, you don't know Napster? No. What is that? Oh, let me show you. So we go to her computer. She starts playing one of our songs. I'm like, what? Oh, it's Napster. Oh my gosh, this is my. Oh, and I like this one too. Request line? Wait, our whole album is there? So I left the I left Santa Barbara because that was our last show of the tour. I come back home. I'm like, yo, Jimmy Ivy, they're in Napster. He's like, well, we're dealing with it. We're dealing with it. So I go to this club the next Friday. 
some some girls like, oh my gosh, that's Sean Fanning. That's the guy that started Napster. I was like, wait, wait, that's the guy that started Napster. So I go up to him. I'm like, hey, what's up? My name is Will. He was like, hey, what's up, Will? I am. I love the Black Eyed Peas. Like, you started Napster? He's like, yeah. I'm like, hey, can we exchange phone numbers? I want to know, like, what did it take for you to make that? So the first person I ever met in tech, as the record companies were trying to fight the North, South, right in the North, Hollywood, Silicon Valley, was Sean Fanning. Sean Instead Fanning. of getting mad at him, you asked for his number. Yeah, because I wanted to know what the hell this was. Like, yo, what is this? Yeah, so that's how I met. That's how I met the Bay. That's how I got introduced to this side of the world back in 2000. How do you get inspiration? How do how do how would you guide people to to find their creativity? Everyone's creative. They just they just don't believe they are. Right? There's no there are no rules. What somebody thinks is horrible, somebody thinks is beautiful. What somebody thinks is not good, somebody thinks is pretty freaking awesome. Right? There's people that think Prince like sings bad. And then there's some people that think Prince sings amazing. There's people that hate death metal. There's lots of people that love death metal. So there's no rules. But the differentiation, the things that the commonality between all those different things is the belief that each one of those folks has within themselves. And so you have to believe that whatever you're making is going to soothe you. You have to believe that you are the Calvary to your own problems. That's creativity. It's like the belief in whatever it is you're doing. And that is infectious. Somebody's going to look at that painting. Are they looking at the painting because it's awesome? Or are they feeling some other force of like, yeah. I think they're feeling some other force of, I believe in that. And belief goes a long way. But it starts with, do you believe? Thank you for your creativity and everything that you're doing for kids, for the tech community, for creatives. Oh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. I heard that. Um, I love how you won't let me wrap up. <laughs> I heard Richard was your first interviewer on the podcast. Yeah. Richard's so sure. That dude's freaking awesome sauce. And, uh, and I know how competitive he probably saw Chad GPT and was like, this is what I've been saying the whole damn time. You know, and so it's a it's a beautiful thing to like to have the cat that used to be there at Salesforce see you, an awesome entrepreneur, now CEO of Salesforce AI, and have him on the podcast now that he's left and now doing you.com. He's amazing. He's so inspiring. He's taught me so much. So, so happy for you. And more importantly, all the girls in my uh, computer science program and the robotics program, they're going to be super inspired by you. Because when you think of AI, it, it's dudes all the time. Um, and that's, it's refreshing that you know, you're there at one of the biggest companies in the world leading um, the charge, rocking with Mark. Thank you, Will. Really? It's going to be dope. Well, so good to have you on the show. Um, I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're the best. What an amazing conversation with Will I Am. I learned so many things. Um, three big takeaways for me. One, everyone is creative. We just have to listen to ourselves and find that conviction and be bold. Number two is to embrace change. In 2000, the Black Eyed Peas, like so many musicians, were disrupted by Napster and the internet. Instead of fighting it, Will exchanged numbers with the founder. He sees AI creating the same disruption today and also opportunity for musicians. Embrace the change. Number three is that Will thinks that AI will mean every student will have an Ivy League professor in their pocket to learn from at any time. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Ask More of AI, a podcast at the intersection of business and AI. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts and follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. 